Hey everybody, today I want to introduce you to what I call one pot wonders. Now these are annual plants that you can put one plant in one 12 inch pot and they get big enough to hold their own. Now I am saying they're one pot wonders, but they also work well in flower beds and in the landscape. So something to think about. First plant I'm going to tell you about is verbena. Now verbena comes in a variety of sizes. I'm talking specifically about the lanai variety that we carry, which is similar to the superbena that Proven Winters puts out there, uh, maybe a little bit smaller than the uh, Superbina, but this kind is great for baskets and, and for in your pots and that type of thing. Uh, it doesn't get as big as some of those landscape varieties that are out there, uh, but you put one of those in a pot, they do tend to get wider than they get tall. Uh, I'd be apt to probably put two in because I like the trailing action that you'll see coming off of those verbena, but you could get away with one and it would have just kind of that nice little mound uh, with a little bit of trailing going over the edge of a 12 inch pot. So very attractive option. Another one I'm gonna tell you about is Impatience. So Impatience come in a couple different sizes. There's compact and there's vigorous. Uh, we have the Sun Harmony, which kind of fits in the middle of that. One in a 12 inch pot would work, especially if it's under ID conditions. And that's the other thing that you have to consider. If you want these plants to reach their maximum size, they need the right amount of light, right amount of water, right amount of nutrition. So if you're if they're missing one of those, they might not reach their maximum size. So if you're doing one pot wonders, you're going to need to make sure that you're taking good care of them and that they're getting everything they need to reach that maximum size, especially on these smaller ones that I'm talking about. Because as I go on, I'm going to get to the big ones. Those are kind of foolproof giants. Uh, these are going to be the ones that you're going to want on their, their maximum size to be a one pot wonder. Uh, next plant I'll tell you about would be Calibrichoas. So when it comes to cha-chas, that's the one that really does do well on its own. It's a really a dense plant with lots of branches and lots of flowers. So that one you could put one in. We always put two in a 12 inch pot because we like that extra size and that extra trailing action, but these would hold up on their own with one. Uh, you can also do the same thing with super bells. Super bells don't have quite as tight and dense of a structure, at least in our experience, but they would hold up in a 12 inch pot quite well and go over the edge. So another one to think about. Next up would be geraniums. Now, geraniums come in a couple different sizes. When I'm talking about these, I am talking specifically about the Calliope series. There are a couple other varieties that we have that are a little bigger. The Calliopes are great because you could put them in 12 inch pot. They have a lot of branching. They fill out really nice and they get lots of flowers. So they do hold up on their own with one plant. Uh, if you put more in, it just is a better show, but you can get away with one. Uh, you can also do that with the Calliope mediums. Uh, they're just gonna be a little bit smaller. And then like an Ivy geranium, the Great Balls of Fire, same thing. You could put one and you're gonna fill that pot very, very nicely. Uh, we tend to put, I think, three or more. I think we might even put five. Oh, we put a lot in. Anyway, that's why our uh, ivy geraniums tend to get really big and full is because we have so many plants in there. The other advantage to One Pot Wonders is that you actually don't have to water them as much because one plant is able to use up that space and all the water goes to one plant instead of spreading it out among all the other plants. So that can be another advantage to doing this. So you're going to get one plant that gets bigger uh, and just use up all the resources so you're not having to keep watering and watering and watering. If you have five plants in a 12 inch pot, by the end of the summer, you're giving it lots of water to keep them looking healthy. Uh, this way it can kind of save you on that. But some of those combinations are so beautiful. Anyway, kind of up to you what you're looking for. Uh, let's see, what else do I have here? Mandevillas are a climber, so if you have them climbing up something, you only need one in a pot with a trellis and they're gonna look great and they have big, beautiful flowers. So great option there. The uh, Pakistaki, I think it's called. We call it the shrimp plant. Other people call it the lollipop plant. That one gets a really good size and it has really cool flowers that actually look like little shrimp or prawns. Uh, so just interesting. And actually it's, the flowers are white and there's yellow parts that are actually a leaf, but it's what you think is the flower. So very interesting plant and kind of a conversation piece as well. So uh, Pentis is another one that we're trying out this year. These actually get quite large and they have a big dome of flowers on them. So we're looking forward to trying those out. Based on the size that they get to, they would be pretty good one pot wonders. And I've seen some good examples of them uh, growing that size. So looking forward to uh, introducing those. Uh, another one that people might not think about as a one pot wonder would be sweet potato vine or Ipomia or Ipomia. Uh, those, because they don't have flowers, sometimes get overlooked. Uh, if you go with 
say the regular lime green varieties, uh, you're going to get more of just a color block. Uh, some of the more interesting leaf varieties like the Medusa or the Red Hawk, those are going to actually have a lot more texture and could be a little more interesting uh, as a one-pot wonder. The one thing I would say with especially like the regular Ipomias, not the, necessarily the uh, Medusa, is that as they start to grow, wouldn't hurt to kind of trim them back, leave a couple leaf sets, trim them off, and you're going to get more branching. So if you're trying to get them to be a one-pot wonder, good idea to give them that trim so that they get fuller, and then you're going to get more impact on those. Next up is Lantana, especially now that we've upgraded to the Bandolero variety and also the Hot-Blooded. Those are going to get a lot bigger. They're going to look great in a pot. I've seen examples where people only put one in. Again, it's like the Verbena and some of the other plants. Putting two in gives you more bang for your buck. But if you're trying to just do one-pot wonders, hey, Put one in that 12-inch pot, you're going to be happy with it. Especially, like I'm going to say, the hot-blooded one is one that is intended to be able to get a little bit bigger than some of the other varieties without going full landscape size. Full landscape size uh, lantana gets huge, uh, bigger than sometimes the Supertunia vistas, uh, which are giants as well. Also, Angelonia gets a good size, so you could put one of those in there, as well as the Argeratum. That is the golden butterfly, really good option. That one does get nice and full. Uh, Whopper begonias, that's a wax begonia. That's one of the biggest begonias out there. It's a really good option if you want to just put one in there and just have it on the, the porch. That one fills out super, super nice. Another one is the Kufia, the Hummingbird's Lunch, and the Vermillionaire. Both of those get a really good size. Putting one of those in a 12-inch pot is great. We tend to put two in just because we like the, the kind of big effect that that gives it. But if you put one in there, you'd be fine too. Uh, and the Hummingbird's go nonstop after that one. So keep that one in mind. Then there's Gumfrina Truffula Pink. That one gets a really beautiful ball of pink flower, and it's got a nice branch shape to it. It fills out really nice. You can trust that one in a pot by itself. It does mix well with other plants, though, too, because of the way that branching is. So it's one that you can do either way. Uh, I liked it. Last year, we put it with some Scivola, and it just looked fantastic because you had this blanket of Scivola with the truffle of pink coming up over it. Anyway, why am I not talking about uh, One Pot Wonders? I'm getting off topic here. Sorry. Back on track right now. I had mentioned the Super Tunia Vistas. These are some of the biggest petunias out there. Definitely a one-pot wonder. Uh, you, I wouldn't put more than two in a 12-inch pot. These can actually be put in even larger pots, and they do fantastic. But there are other types of petunias that you could put in a 12-inch pot, and they'll do very well, including the regular Super Tunias. And then the other ones, I'm going to give you the names of those. Uh, Surfenias are going to do fine. The Surprise varieties, those are going to do great. The Durabloom are also going to be good options. Those are about the same size as a Supertunia. Midnight Gold is our one double that really grows really quite nicely. Headliner, I'd say, is between a Supertunia Vista and a Supertunia. And then uh, Super Cal Premium Pachoas. Those are also get a really nice size. In fact, those are just a little bit smaller than some of the Supertunia Vistas. So something to think about. And then we also have the Wave Petunias. Those get really wide. Those tend not to get as high, as well as the Zoom Petunia. That's one that we're bringing back from last year. So those are all ones that you could put in a 12-inch pot. Uh, the Supertunia Vistas, those you could put in bigger pots. Those are giants. So, and don't be fooled on petunias if it says extra, extra large or extra large or giant. Uh, that usually refers to the flower size. So you'll want to look at the tags to make sure that you're getting one that gets bigger than, say, 20 some inches uh, to know that it is a one pot wonder, truly. Because there are a lot of petunias that they call them, you know, the compact ones that are more the ice cream scoop ones. And those are becoming more popular because a lot of people are putting petunias on their decks or porches and type of things. So they want a more compact variety and those tend to be a serious mounding petunia so uh, look at those tags coleus is another plant that there are a lot of one pot wonders on the smaller size the la freak and the monkey puzzle those are going to be a little bit smaller but they can hold their own in a 12 inch pot then as we get into more of the main street series those definitely can be in a larger than 12 inch pot all by themselves. They'll look great. Same thing with Color Blaze. Those are the super giant ones. And King, Kingswood Torch, those will be the ones that no question about it, you only need one of those in the pot, but they do play nice with other plants as well. So you could put them in with other things and they'll look great. But if they're in a pot by themselves, they will just keep growing and growing and fill the space. Whatever space is available, they just keep going for it. Next up are the salvias. The smallest one we carry is the Cathedral Series. I'm not going to put that in the one pot wonder, although they make a great centerpiece in your pots. Uh, they usually 
hold up better with uh, more things in them. But if you move into like the unplugged pink, that's a nice big full one. You only need one of those in a pot if you want, uh, but it does play nice with other plants. So does the Hummingbird Falls, another one that can really fill out. And then if you really want something big and giant, you are going to be really happy with the rock and play in the blues salvia. That's a blue one from Proven Winners. It's very, very large. Now, salvias tend to need a lot more water when they're uh, that big. Uh, but fortunately, if you only have one in the pot, it's a little less stress on you. So something to think about. And then there's the colocasia. Those are the dark elephant ears. So a really pretty one is the illustrious. We carry that one. It's nice and dark beautiful dark leaf and that one fills out great. It definitely is a one pot wonder. Those tend to like a little bit of extra water. Uh, then we also have coffee cups which has a different leaf shape. It's actually a cup shape and when it rains it will fill up with water and then it'll when it fills up, it'll dump the water out. So kind of an interesting little feature with that one. Uh, we tried it for some of our other varieties, but those are the two that we were able to get. Last two years, colocations have been a little tricky to get. I don't know, growers are having problems with them, but when they do come in, they're great. And we've been very, very happy with all the ones that we have had. So we had uh, black swan last year, and that was a really beautiful, large one as well. Uh, next up are gonna be some of the grasses. And the grasses are some of the biggest plants that you can get, and they tend to like water. So keep that in mind. Uh, so they make great one pot wonders. And those are ones that you can kind of put in the back and then you can put your other one pot wonders in front of it. Uh, the biggest one is the King Tut. That one is enormous. And that one, as well as the Prince Tut, which can hold its own in a one pot as well. Uh, those two are probably the most water hungry plants out there. So they're intended actually to be more of a water plant. Like you can plant it right in a bog and it'll do great. So something to think about, but also all the fountain grasses like Cherry Sparkler and Fireworks, those will do great. Uh, the Red Rubrum, grass and the ponytails and red rooster, those get pretty big too. So you could put those in their own pot. They're going to do great. So another one to think about is, uh, is it Transcandia, the Wandering Jew? That's got a beautiful purple and silver leaf. Uh, the trick with that one though, is you get one plant and then as it starts to grow, you cut off one of the leaves and you just stick it in the soil and the soil just needs to be damp. It doesn't have to be super wet. You just don't want it to dry out and it will root right there and you just kind of cut them off and you will end up with tons and tons and tons of this plant. So it's it's a really good option and it will fill a pot as well. So that one we're cheating a little bit because you take one plant and you actually create a whole bunch of plants out of it. So I would say that's a one pot wonder in a different way. A lot of those trailing plants though, I they get huge. They might get three, four feet long, but I wouldn't put them as a one pot wonder because they don't get tall enough. So like the Creeping Jenny would be one, the Dichondra Silver Falls or the Dichondra Silver Nickel Vine. Uh, they just, they're kind of flat, but they are huge when they go, but I wouldn't qualify those as a one pot wonder. Then there's the Sun Credible Helianthus. These are beasts. They get nice and big, full of flowers, bright colors, and you do only need one of those in a pot. These also are fantastic in the, the landscape. They just kind of keep going nonstop. So those are the ones that I would recommend. So that's my list of one pot wonders. If you'd like to see some of these plants in action, Laura from Garden Answer did do a video where she did exactly this. She took one plant, put it in one pot, often them times bigger than a 12 inch, and then she reported back on how they did. So it's a good way for you to see how they grew for her. And um, it's just a way for you to start thinking and visualizing exactly how they might look and how you can use them in your garden. So uh, it's just kind of an interesting concept. Uh, we a lot of times focus on really a lot on combinations. And so doing these one pot, it's just a totally different way of gardening and can change the look of an area as well. And remember, these are great plants to put out in the landscape. So if you have a spot, say, you know, out in the back or down by the mailbox and you want something that's going to be a little bit easier or you only need one plant, you don't want to invest in a whole kind of landscape design, these can be good options for you. So give them a try. Uh, I just want you to know which ones are kind of the more vigorous ones, the ones that you can do this with. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all very, very soon. Oh, and I thought I'd tell you about the wallpaper behind me. This is a William Morris reproduction of a pattern called Golden Lily. And you can see not only does it have those beautiful lilies inside of it, but there's a couple other plants in there too. Just nice old fashioned kind of wallpaper that I just liked. And another example of how when you like botanical, it kind of seeps into every aspect of your life. So I uh, thought I'd share that with you. Talk to you all very soon.